Yo. All right. What's up, y'all? Um, new stream setup, new me. How do you like my facial hair? <laughs> don't don't reply to that. Uh, I am drinking for today. We're drinking the Wilderen, which is a, a local beer. Well, not local to where I live right now, but a local brewery nonetheless. Um. And it's it's not bad. This is the Wilderen Goud, Gold, Wilderen Gold, and it's in a weird glass. It's fruity, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice. So, a bit of background maybe uh, for those of us uh, that are new here. I have been trying to code a new website. Um, where basically the main concept revolves around a leadership board. So, or um, not the leadership, a leaderboard for uh, the computer game Diabotical, which is a, a, an arena FPS. And what's uh, weird about it is that this um, leaderboard... Mm, do I not have anything about it somewhere? Burr, burr, burr. Nope, I don't. So the, um, the the main interesting part about the leaderboard is that we're not really sure about um, how the scoring algorithm is going to be or like what it's going to be like because really we want to try and play around with it so that we've got the, the most optimal behavior, let's say, out of the players that are joining the, the leaderboard, in fact. Um, and for this purpose, I was thinking, hmm, wouldn't it be interesting if I have like a way to uh, come up with a new algorithm and then see how all of the previous actions that happened on, on a leaderboard, like reporting matches, and players joining, etc., and challenging each other, 
how that would relate to a new uh, new leaderboard built out of a new scoring algorithm. So for that purpose, I was thinking, hmm, this sounds like a job for event sourcing. So then uh, I thought, uh, maybe let's do it in event sourcing. I don't know anything about it. So this will be a great, great hobby project for me to work on. So uh, yeah, um, what I didn't take into account though is that uh, buying a house and renovating it is quite a lot of work and uh, it's been taking up a lot of my time. Um, but yeah, so here we are again with some free time um, and I'm going to try and explain the stuff that I learned last Friday when our company has uh, so every month at the the last day of the month somewhere or last week we hold a knowledge sharing afternoon where we just uh, you know teach each other what we've learned or ask questions to each other and this was a, a great opportunity for me to ask some questions I already had a, a talk with uh, Jo van Turnhout which is uh, yeah one of my colleagues he's a absolute beast. He knows so much. It's really, well, he's a source of inspiration for me. So yeah, it's, it's really cool to have someone like that in the company that you can just talk to and, and help you out with for, for various uh, reasons. And um, as I was talking with him, I, st I still needed to let it simmer. That's like a, one of the, those patterns in the, in the pragmatic thinking and learning book, right? So let it simmer. You need to internalize this information that you just gained out of a conversation. Maybe I had stuff written down or not. It uh, doesn't really matter. I needed to let it simmer. So I did that. Then I took whatever I learned. I asked the same question again in the knowledge sharing afternoon last Friday. And then I got like some valuable discussion out of that as well and some new insights. And furthermore, uh, as I was doing that and uh, explaining all of this stuff, I was also drawing a lot of stuff in Miro in our board. So um, what I came up with, or like the main question that I had was, um, if indeed I want to recreate a leaderboard based on um, events that happen in my domain, um, do I then need to make all of my domain uh, event sourced? That was my main question. Uh, in short, what I've learned is, so this is going to be a very, uh, like a summary. Huh? Um, but so the thing I learned was that, or I think I learned, was that no, I don't really need to have everything event sourced because uh, you can just have, excuse me, I'm going to cough a bit. All right, um, sorry for that. So uh, no, no, I don't need to do everything, uh, every one of my aggregates uh, in an event in sourced manner. It's good enough if if I just have a, a silly CRUD domain or uh, bounded context where uh, players can register, matches can be uh, organized and uh, reported on, challenges can be accepted, etc. Uh, as long as uh, the events that result from, so for example, if I create a new player, it means uh, maybe a player has registered. This event I want to put on an event stream, uh, maybe just like a, some some kind of pipeline or whatever, that the leaderboard uh, class is listening to, or like some something else that's listening to this, like for example, a policy. And um, this one decides which domain events that, that are coming out of the other context um, the leaderboard is interested in, uh, replays them, and then um, and internalizes them all in a leaderboard via an event sourced mechanism as well. So the, the leaderboard is going to be hydrated. Uh, I, I've learned the term uh, based on events that are created based off of the main events that are being put on the event stream from this uh, other silly CRUD domain. So that seems like a, a very uh, feasible, for me at least, uh, solution to my problem. Now, the other thing, uh, my other colleague, Tom Tutenau, uh, he also explained that, 
well, if you are going to do event sourcing anyway in your leaderboard context, why not just um, make everything event sourcing? Because if you're going to use a framework like Exxon, for example, then uh, it might just make it uh, easy enough for me not to deal with uh, how this stuff gets persisted and rebuilt or like the hydration, etc. Uh, and in that case, I could still make policies, but these policies would just end up querying like a, a main event stream, let's say, of, of all of the aggregates or whatever, and then decide based out of that event stream um, how to hydrate a leaderboard out of that. So it's like a little bit of a migration from what I understood there. Um, so as an example, eh? so I, I'm, I think I'm going to choose the, the first one where uh, we are being very explicit about the domain events that are being thrown um, and then how those can be reflected into a leaderboard itself. By the way, uh, if, if there are any questions or, or uh, tips, please put them in chat. Uh, maybe I can learn a thing or two as well. So the, the way that uh, I was thinking about it is, so you, you create or a player registers. I don't know. I think I've got something like here. This, here's the sign up flow. So uh, what would happen is some rando visits the website. They click the register button. They're being redirected to a federated login like Google or whatever. Uh, eventually, we will uh, get from the federated login a, a valid JOT token, and then we can finally uh, register that player and make them known within the scramble.gg uh, or scramble egg uh, website. Um, so once we've got a player registered here, at that point in time, where is it? Oh, okay, we've got it right here. Then a new player is uh, created, let's say, and we're going to fire off a player registered event. And this, by firing it off, um, the ev it will be put on the event stream. I don't really know yet how I'm going to do that. Maybe it's just a spring application event listener. We, I'm not really sure. But in any case, if like two players are registered, then they can start challenging each other. So let's say one player registers uh, a challenge or they, they send out a challenge to another player. It gets created. At that point in time, we've got the domain event. A player challenged another player, let's say, as a domain event. It also gets put on the queue. Then eventually the other player accepts the challenge. We've got an, another domain event here that's being put on the queue. And then uh, eventually this new uh, challenge will also create a match. I think actually it shouldn't be from the new, it should be from the accepter. Eh? Uh, and then eventually when you've got a match report sub being submitted, then the player submitted a re match report can also be an event. And we've got uh, more stuff on the event stream. Ah, yeah, this is like a, an important part. Uh, <laughs> um, the, these blue cards here are actions or commands. The orange ones are just domain events, so still con being contained within this uh, bounded context. And then eventually they will be um, transformed into broadcast events, maybe just one-to-one -one on an event stream. And then we've got the pink cards, and those are projections uh, that are coming out of a leaderboard. So maybe let's just look at this one. So if we've got... Uh, a policy that uh, is going to determine which broadcast events that are that it's interested in. It's going to, uh, yeah, so I've added a line that says it belongs to a leaderboard. And eventually um, it'll say, well, look, player X1 from player Y with score 12, 0. At that point in time, we can... Uh, rehydrate this leaderboard and then apply this function to it. And then uh, once this update happens, it will cause a new projection to base to update the leaderboard ranking. Basically, that's that's the that's the main idea there. And then Timmy asks uh, or says something instead of reapplying the stream, 
you can create an internal read model and that read model is used for your domain decisions. So indeed, uh, that's the idea of uh, the, the leaderboard here. So this is my uh, internal read model basically. And uh, what this thing is going to decide on is what kind of events basically or uh, I'm interested in and that's where this policy comes in because it's going to decide uh, which events are important but then also furthermore it's going to apply um, for example which events get scored in a particular way so let's say that we uh, we attribute one point just for challenging somebody else then that scoring algorithm will be retained within the leaderboard uh, internal read model, let's say. And then once that gets updated, then it will project basically a new ranking. So this is really a projection of uh, the leaderboard itself. That's the, that's the main idea here. And I think, yeah, I think that's about it actually. So I haven't really gotten um, a good technical solution here. I mean, not yet. I'm not sure that I want to look into using Exxon uh, because I don't actually know why. Maybe I'm just afraid of learning something new just for this project. And I, I yeah, I just want to, uh, how do you say that? I want to be productive <laughs> or try to be a little bit more productive. Uh, for that reason, I think I've what I've done already now or last time, I don't think I've streamed this as um, I wanted to make sure that my uh, REST API adapter can talk to, uh, well, not can talk to, can fire off commands or whatever. So for example, uh, we've got our stupid challenge controller, which is just like the REST API. And um, this contains a challenge uh, method. So if you post to slash API slash challenge with um, uh, which player challenged who, the initiator and the opponent, then I want to execute a challenge player command that contains both the initiator and the opponent. Um, and then once this is done, then I guess I can uh, execute a query called query player by ID um, just to fetch that the opponent was successfully challenged here. So I want to learn what their name was, basically. Um, I don't really remember why I did it like this, because I'm imagining that whenever someone is going to challenge a player, it might just be a little bit smarter to also add their name uh, in, in, this, in this payload here, because, I mean, <laughs> you've already, uh, how do you say, you've already learned who you're going to challenge anyway by their nickname or whatever and uh, we can just send that along because mm, the amount of time between challenging a player that you see on your screen and them changing their nickname in the meanwhile is going to be very small huh? but i think i just did it so that i could have uh the same setup for executing queries and that's that's about it so this is not tested this was just to playing playing around with it, making sure that it can work. Um, so this is a command that belongs in core API. Um, and then for this command, there should be a corresponding handler. This handler is in the actual core. Um, and then what this core thing or the handler does is it's going to find the re registered player repository get a player by id or throw a runtime that you can't find it and then execute the command challenge player on this registered player that we can find here it just directs to um 
a function on the registered player itself, so our domain class here. Don't really know why I've made it into a data class. I don't really, yeah, don't really care about it just yet. Um, but then just to, I don't know, like add some other behavior than um, returning the player challenged domain event. So this thing here is an event. Uh, it belongs in the domain or in the API, eh? but it's a domain event. And then um, what I want to do here, since it's being returned, where is that thing? I don't think uh, I do anything with it. So here's the execute. No, I just return it from the challenge player handler. And I don't think I do anything with it. So this one, I think should return. Uh, it's unit. Ah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't do anything with the result here. So handle returns a domain event. So maybe what I can do here is like, well, what the hell am I doing? Uh, assign it to domain event. So this is in the under the assumption that I'm always throwing domain events whenever a command has happened. Um, I'm not sure if that's correct because I'm not used to this, uh, how do you say, the style, let's say. So it, I, it's a learning, it's a learning experience, let's say. So what I want to do here is to publish my domain event. What I think I could do eh, is since domain event is a thing in uh, my core, maybe let's do something like this domain event dot publish or something there we go this is not going to exist i think yeah there we go so i want to uh, make it exist ah here it is uh so let's do an extension function on domain event yeah and now i need uh some kind of let's call it publish so what i need is a, a way to publish this event and typically you do this by uh, injecting an event broadcaster or whatever uh, but i don't think i've got uh, spring wiring here i'm not really sure I do have this crap here, but so I'm not sure. I mean, I, I haven't tested it out yet. So I think this is infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. so this is infrastructure. So it can have, in fact, um, stuff injected to it. But then I don't think I want to do it as a, as an, um, allez, an extension function. Maybe I just want to uh, add a domain event broadcaster i don't know yet what to call this thing what's that like domain event broadcaster uh and then i want to publish this domain event uh, and then this should be okay and now i can add listeners to this and however I implement it shouldn't be uh, a concern for this command executor. Now I do notice that um, my head is already starting to, you know, like uh, get jumbled with a bunch of stuff because there's so much in, in this one file. Um, even though it's only 55 lines long. <laughs> This is silly, yeah. But now I somehow my my mind works in mapping files to uh, responsibilities. And now if I read this file, it's got the responsibility of commands, queries, and the repositories even, and then domain events. It's a bit, I mean, it's a bit much, no. Um, or. What I could also do is just embrace it. 
and really push it to to its limits. Let's do that. Let's uh, break the cycle a bit. Um, yeah, I think we'll need some kind of domain event broadcaster. So now I'm I'm doing all of this stuff without uh, having it tested properly, and I don't like that one bit. So maybe what I want to do, uh, since I have, um, I don't really have like a good way to test this in an integrated way. Um, and even though this is uh, yeah sort of CQRS, I don't have the the setup for clean architecture, so I don't have actual uh, business cases that I can uh, call to. Um, how do you say that again? To 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 call scenario or to initiate scenario tests to test all those things in an integrated way. So what I might do instead is just use my registration controller as like my entry point for um, testing business cases. And I think, or I hope what that will do is it will make sure that my REST controller remains task oriented as well. So, uh, I mean that's that's just a hope of mine. I'm not really sure if that's uh, if that's gonna stay that way because the nature of UI and especially in Elm, I'm not really sure how that's gonna work out. But we will see. We will see. Uh, what's going on here? Could not auto wire because command executor is not a, a Spring Bean. I think I've got Spring. Oh, I don't. Uh, that's that may be why. So, uh, do you guys think it's or folks? Sorry, do you folks think that it's okay to introduce Spring Wire in your infrastructure layer? I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes. Yes, that's fine. Just for uh, yeah, Jesus, I already forgot what that plugin of mine is called. It's just Spring Conventions. There we go. Ah, uh, I've got the approval of Timmy, so the blessing, that's great, because then I can start making these things into components, which is nice. Uh, yeah. Oi, that's not the, the component I was looking for. Import. Aleo. Oh, is, maybe I should wait for Gradle to complete. Huh? Uh, query executor should also be component. Then these query handlers, these things. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to add component on this thing or if I need to put it on these things, like the actual handlers themselves. So that I, I'm not really, I don't really know anymore because I am a... Uh, you know, like it's like one of those things. Like if you if you're past that setup phase, then you just start using it, and you don't really remember why or what what the things that you needed to do were. Sentences, Tim. Sentences. Yeah. Component. Uh, yeah, this is also a bit weird. I'm not sure, it just looks way too fancy, so maybe I'm going to need to strip that. Um, so indeed, those are fine. And then... So that was uh, a thing that magically just worked. Uh, let's try and do that. Huh. Ah, there we go. So uh, we can just put it on uh, the handler itself or the interface. I mean, let's put it there too. Queries don't need to be components. Neither do commands. Uh, aggregate ID is somehow a type alias, but I don't know. I ah, hear this. Okay. So that is one of the benefits of putting it all in one file. Of course, you only need to 
you can immediately see where aggregate ID is used. And I guess all of this stuff belongs together and it's quite short. Uh, now I think I need to wire repositories, but I'm not really sure. Let's try and find uh, some uh, query player by ID. So this needs to have some kind of handler. No handler. Yeah, bastard. Maybe it's just player ah player by ID query handler and here it's called query player by ID. Okay. I don't like that inconsistency. So let's call it like this. I guess I can just leave away the query part as well, just like I do with the commands in fact. All of these decisions. Oops. Okay, so if you go to the player by ID handler, it should have a repository. No, actually, no. Uh, we've got a repository for aggregate function that is being called. And ah, okay. Maybe what I'll do here is um, I will inject repositories or something. This is so weird. Ah, I just made it work. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you can just inject. Oh no, I don't think you can actually. Mm. You know, maybe what I can do, this is a, no, no I don't think I can. I think what I can do is, uh, no, I don't think that will, that will work either. Okay. I think this is just too fancy. Uh, I don't need to, to do that. Uh, I guess what I could do is like get like a, a repositories class class. Let's call it repositories. Let's inject all of the repositories. So this should be a component. Mm, we'll have a list of repositories. Uh, Yeah, this I don't think is going to work. But we can try. Yeah. Uh, where do we put that? It should be here, maybe. Um, and what I then can do is put this function there or like copy it there, maybe. And then I can make sure that these get queried stories. Now there's an issue. What's the issue? Repository for uh, they're different types, I guess. Oh yeah, I don't want to define it again here. Uh, this is an issue. Why? Because repositories are not compon components. There we go. And that should be solved soon. No. Ah, yeah, I can't. Ah, it actually works. That's interesting. Um, but then in my queries, uh, the, the our handler, I guess I should do this one. I'm not really sure if that will work. So we're still just typing away. Uh, 
what's up with this? Oh yeah, let's maybe get rid of that for now, or maybe just put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the handler. Oh yeah, the this one, which should get. Where is the constructor? Nowhere. Um, so we'll add the, oh boy, the repositories interface or the class. Yeah, maybe add a val to it then. What don't you? Ooh. Yeah, I hate that I need to do this all of, all of the time. Uh, I don't care about it. So I don't I don't want to type it. That's like the, the main issue. So I don't I think it's just too much fancy stuff. I only want the the player repository for this one anyway. So let's just do player repository. Okay. Yeah. By the way, uh, I am aware that uh, I said well. I, I only want a CRUD domain huh, in my... Uh, where is it? It would be useful if I would... Ah, here. Silly CRUD domain. What do I have now? CQRS domain. <laughs> so, I, I mean... Uh, anyway. Uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, do I even have a player in my core? I, I do have a registered player, so maybe... Uh, yeah. And then this registered player repository should be this thing. And I can ask, ask, ask get by ID um, if that doesn't work, through an exception. Oh, uh, yeah. But I guess I should move this runtime over here uh, and then maybe also not make it a runtime, but that's for a later, a later session, maybe. Not really sure. Uh, get rid of this. Because I don't need it. Bye. Um, this thing also don't really know what to do with it. Do I still use it somewhere? Ah oh, yeah, so in the challenge player handler, which is the command, I am also using um, a repository. Uh, but maybe, you know, let's also inject it. Uh, Layer repository, nice. And then I can just replace it. Uh. Voila. So we retrieve our player to challenge. And then I don't like that it's just called ID because I, uh, I remember now. Uh, I just called this ID because this is like the, the challenger ID. Maybe I should just call it challenger ID then. What say you? Challenger ID. Oh, it did say... Uh, oh, yeah. Now I, I remember. Because uh, this is an overridden property because all commands have IDs. Shit. Uh, hmm. I, yeah, I don't know how to fix that. Maybe make this into a getter or something and then have my oops, have my oops implement it, um, by returning this, uh, challenger ID then. <clears throat> the other thing I could do is, uh, provide a type alias that may be a better idea uh, let's call it challenger ID voila there we go donesies 
and then this is the challenge or I guess the opponent ID. Maybe let's call it that as well. They're the same, man, but I mean, it's just another way to make stuff explicit. Uh, and in that case, this can also change. Man, how cool are type aliases? Um, no. Okay, so if we go, this is, ah, okay, there we go. Now it, uh, IntelliJ even reports that, yeah, I can wire a command executor, nice, nice, nice. And I can also inject a query executor. So I think we've got all of the infrastructure set up, in fact, now to, uh, f to execute challenge or to execute commands and then also execute queries. Uh, yeah, and th there was also like a fancy bit here, mm, which I don't really know if I, I if I like it all that much. Uh, why was that? So typically, if you do, um, if you execute a query, well, maybe it's not typical, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this query executor is going to return something by the domain. Um, uh, because behind the scenes, you want to basically work with your domain classes as much as you can. Uh, but in this case, I mean, in this case, it, you want registered players, but you don't just want actual registered players. You want registered players uh, representation to throw back to the front end and then, or out of your uh, REST API. This maybe the string that's maybe not something i want to return because i just noticed that i'm not actually doing anything with that um i think i just replaced this uh, at some point with uh not just a string but a, a payload so i haven't updated this yet um anyway that means that if you execute a query, this thing, um, your handler here should um, make sure that it's going to return some kind of representation that you want to um, throw back to whatever thing is using it. And in this case, uh, I want my registered player regist present representation to be returned. So really what this is, is just a... Uh, a silly in-between class um, that looks like this. It looks almost exactly like um, my actual domain, this thing. And then uh, what I do after it to make it into a JSON, uh, because the it here you can see it, uh, and it is in this case is a registered player representation because the player by ID query note. Um, types it like that way um, and that's and then I just map it again to a registered player JSON so I don't really like that I have to do this much mapping but the main reason for that is that I didn't want to expose my uh, domain classes to my rest API I'm not sure if that's the correct decision so this stays very clean uh, and then in API, we've got, at least I thought I had, yeah. So it's a bit weird, but maybe I should just rename the class to call it, uh, dang it. I don't know what I should actually call this. Mm. Yeah, because by looking at the project structure, you can't really determine that this thing exists. Um, then again, player by ID is a query and this is the thing that it returns. So maybe I should call it query or something. Hmm. I guess it's okay. Yeah. 
maybe it takes some getting used to whatever uh yeah so it belongs in the api that's my, my main uh idea there cool cool uh cool yeah and so now what i wanted to do was write like uh, an integration test to make sure that everything gets wired properly so i want to you know fucking hell I want something that goes through all of the the layers now. Uh, let's see, do I have like an... Mm, I think here. Uh, let's see if I actually have that thing. I don't think I do. Yeah, so this is like an example of when I was explaining this to uh, Cordesk. I've got a UI registration component. It's going to register a player that's going to end up in the controller, which is the REST and the adapter REST API thing. Uh, this thing is going to execute a registration command, which is going to be picked up by this handler. The registration command handler in their turn are going to call on the repository to make sure that uh, this registered player is saved and verify that it's being a transaction committed. Then when that thing is done, oh yeah, maybe I should also, okay, uh, maybe so it doesn't really, this is no longer event sousing the leaderboard, but really just like a simple flow. Uh, so in that case, player query handler or player by ID, ID query handler, there we go, also goes to the repository and then fetches it again to then show uh, or return via the registration controller to the registration component and our cycle is done. And what I want to do is replace this UI by... Uh, registration scenario in a test context and then they'll start all of this stuff so let's com oof, complete it and then maybe on this part here uh, register player I guess uh, make it small, small enough. Um, yeah, and then we will fetch it, fetch player, whatever, uh, and then this thing gets returned eventually. Yeah. Ooh. successfully challenged player Y. This is going to be too long to fit on just that, that thing. So maybe let's put it in small. Oh, you can go smaller than that. Hmm. Can you attach two arrows? No. No knee. Fine. Uh, and then what I want to do instead is uh, mimic the UI. There we go. And then test the entire flow. Sounds reasonable, right? Uh, so yeah, where do you put this thing? Uh, put it where the sun don't shine. Uh, no, thank you. I will maybe create a new module called um, scenario tests or something, but I might as well put them in web and then put them in a, like a test package or something because this, in a sense, bundles all the things that I'm going to deploy anyway. Uh, maybe I can show you that a little bit 
easier by showing what are all the dependencies of this module. So we've got uh, the REST API adapter. Yeah, basically all of the adapters. Uh, who am I getting? This thing too. I don't know if that's correct yet. We will see. Uh, both core and API. Not really sure if that's correct or necessary even. Because those will be used transitively. Um, by the adapters and this thing itself. So I'm not really sure if uh, it's really necessary, but explicit nonetheless. Eh? Aight. Uh, what say you? We create a package here or a directory called test Kotlin. And then we can create a new package. Let's call it scenario tests. Sure. Then maybe. So in my recent project, we've been using uh, Cucumber and Cucumber has this concept of a uh, glue, adding glue to uh, to, to be the translation layer basically between actual text and um, what code is going to be executed accordingly when you've when Cucumber interprets this text. And uh, the nice thing about that is that you can really separate in a nice way how to uh, um, yeah, basically bundle all of your scenarios and then what code you need to execute in, in steps they're, they're called, uh, what code you need to execute to execute those, those scenarios basically. And I thought this concept is pretty interesting. And I think what I want to do is I want to also include that here somehow. I don't want to make like a very strong um, separation here. Maybe just packages is, is fine enough. Because I, I don't want to spend uh, too much time on that stuff. So maybe just for being a little bit more explicit, it's it's fine. So these these are like my famous famous uh, last words. Uh, this is where it go all goes wrong uh, in the in the in the future. They will be looking a future Tim will be looking at this uh, this the stream and he'll be like, "You idiot! Why didn't you think five more minutes about this problem and then?" Well, future Tim, I don't, I don't really care at this point. You can, I'm sure you will be more wiser than me and you will be able to deal with this uh, better than I am at this point in time. After a beer, maybe you've got uh, like a next Wilderen or something. Oh, this is not in frame. Ah, there we go. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think it's, it should be fine enough. If I put it into packages, I can uh, extract it uh, well enough. So uh, maybe let's call it steps or let's call it scenarios eh? uh, yeah damn it if anybody knows like a better way to do that because I really wanted two packages here and I don't want to change my IntelliJ's view my project structure view so um, yeah so we've got scenarios on the one hand and then steps on the other hand so scenarios should just contain hmm, maybe i can add a uh, a note what is this used for these or this package should only contain actual scenarios uh think uh use cases or business cases if you will i don't care um they should only describe what you can do not how 
you can do it. Those things, uh, the latter, you can find in steps. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, let's put it in here too. File, readme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I already made a typo. I'm pair programming with everyone in chat, huh? so uh, that's at least my uh, my vision on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> even actually is wrong, guys. Uh, actual scenarios. That's the thing I wanted to say there. Uh, mm, <laughs> glue goat? Like a cucumber. Uh, think actions you need to perform versus the REST API or database even uh, to execute actual scenarios oops Oof. aha hey thanks for the cheer rgm yeah <laughs> That's indeed Megan's brother. Uh, think actions need to perform blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the latter you can find in the scenarios package. There we go. Up, done. Now future Tim will know what this thing is used for or supposed to be used for. Then, um, yeah, how do we want to write this? So we've got a Kotlin class, let's call Mm. which scenario are we testing because if i want to test a scenario for challenging a player then i first need two players so uh, yeah uh, challenging players i don't know man Let's just start with registering. Registration. There we go. This is going to be a, oh boy. Now uh, I need uh, spring boot test. All of this crap. Spring test. Uh, don't tell me I don't have this package. Or the... I don't. Nice. Oh wait, no. This this is actually in here. I can remove this because it's contained within Spring Conventions. I wish I could just go there. How are you doing, by the way, RGM? And is this interesting enough for you? Ew, we've got the follow. Go to assault. Oh no. Thanks for the follow. Don't assault me. It's a kind request. So, um, do I want test implementation here as well? I think it's test implementation. It's been a while. Yeah, test implementation is boring as shit. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That means you can watch the stream and chill. Uh, what what am I actually doing? I don't think this is correct. Yeah, this is incorrect. Well done. Uh, so I want to go to the spring conventions. Aha, here, here we go. Uh, and here I want to test implement then there was Gradle 
in your build file comment. Wait, what? Which one? I can't find that comment. Ah, oh wait, hang on. Here, ah oh yeah, okay. This, this part. Uh, how, what, what was, I don't remember what caused me to write. Ah oh yeah, I was, uh, you can watch this in, in, uh, in some of the YouTube archive. Um, I talked with, with Cordusk. Maybe, maybe let's, uh, yeah, I will. Let me let me try and find it somewhere. Uh, um, and so that I can link it. Huh? Mm. Yeah, a water dodder. Playlists, maybe? I can maybe just share the playlist and you'll, you'll find it. You can discover it there. Ah, yeah, so uh, indeed. Instead of groovy script. So now you've got type, typing uh, and auto-completion in your Gradle files because these are all like KTS files. Um, but I have to say it's it's pretty slow, honestly. Like before you get the, the code completion, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, but yeah, some somewhere in those videos, uh, it's the one where I talk with Cordusk. Uh, we go over this brief history of Java build tools basically <laughs> and then i think npm is like here maybe and hopefully they don't need this <laughs> but then transitive dependencies they yeah they still have it they already have a huh? maybe they've just they had a, like a different uh, history yeah? npm uh, yo, I want to add spring test. Um, so to do that, I wanted to add test as a test implementation. Yeah, I don't know that thing by heart. So I think it's just spring boot test. Maybe auto completion works. Spring test. Mm. Okay, then we will look it up. Spring boot test Maven central. Go. Let me make it a little bit larger. Ah, starter test. Damn it. Like this. Yay. Uh, so normally if I refresh then I should also have Spring Boot Starter test in uh, in here somewhere, and then I can start writing tests for that. Um, yeah, pff, the other weird thing is that it keeps complaining about this, but in fact it just works, and uh, still too lazy to fix it. So. Don't know, don't care. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we've got something that looks like this, but here I don't want an, a, a web MVC test. I would do want an actual configuration, but I'm going to use my application for that. This. Don't know what that is. Okay. Whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, I need like a, a better, I think it's just this uh, spring, spring test. So the moment I've got 
dreidel to do its thing. I can just control space this and then hopefully it will work. Right. How is y'all's evening going? I know I came from um, a, a, li a live YouTube uh, session on what was it again? Functional core domain, no functional core architecture with an imperative module or whatever instead of hexa hexagonal architecture. Or what the differences were, I guess. Ah, it was Spring Boot Test. There we go. Hmm. I feel like I, I'm going to want to rename this so I don't make stupid mistakes. Okay, so now we've got a Spring Boot Test. That's great. Now, what do I want to write here? I want to say something like... Uh, Mm, create a player. Uh, that's not that's not a real thing, eh? Um, a an anonymous. Uh oh, anonymous <laughs> user registers themselves and becomes a hero um a registered player okay uh what do i want to do here i want to call upon the create no uh register player step i guess and i want to create a player with the nickname scallop because I'm lazy uh, yeah this is good huh? and then I guess I want to assert that scallop exists as a registered player how do I do that uh, verify registered player Scallop. Is this this is good enough? What do we think about that? Maybe extract this into player nickname. Something like that, and then we can uh, start implementing these things. So maybe. Mm, do I want to? I don't like this. Huh? Execute really. Then again, I do want to sort of like build, build some stuff up, I know. Uh, mom. Um, uh, you know what? This is going to be, no, I think it can still just use uh, HTTP. Yeah? I just want to use an HTTP client somehow to make a REST calls <clears throat> within this thing. Hmm. And we can put that here. Let's call it uh, register. <laughs> Registration steps should have made it into a file and then we can make these into functions and then basically put both of these functions there. They both return hmm, nothing. I don't know yet, but both of these are just simple strings. Uh, there we go. And now I need uh, some kind of a web client. Huh? Kotlin web clients. Mm, 
built asynchronous. I don't like asynchronous yet because it's too complex. But maybe if it's fine, then yeah, I, I want an example for uh, the client. Do I want to maybe this? Oof. Uh, client tools. By the way, if anybody uh, knows what. Hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. I think I want something, I mean, I hope I want something a little bit more high, higher level than this. Don't feel like uh, writing my own JSON parsing, for example. Oh, uh, here it is, client. Um, features. JSON. Yeah, this is uh, what I want. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that you wouldn't be able to... Uh... Okay, I mean, seems simple enough, right? I do think I want to use Jackson because then I can hopefully just reuse stuff. I'm not really sure. Maybe I don't even want to reuse uh, stuff. Huh? Mm. Aight. Okay, maybe this is fine. Let's just try and work with this. Um, so that's like the the downside of using our REST API as a um, how do you say it? like an, as an entry point for writing scenarios instead of just having the use cases uh, because then you can um, call those. But I think, Merlin, I like in my mind is if I also just test. Um, the REST a API, then I'm also testing all of the spring wiring that I need. Uh, yeah. Should be okay, yeah? Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so I need... And then specifically for tests... Maybe I should have uh, put it in a different module voila test implementation uh i want or you want quick start this this doesn't exist but i guess replace it somewhere uh, so that's just uh, the client then hopefully this is really enough i'm not sure about that uh, where is the json thing again here uh, let's do this one so if I read this correctly, then it, it doesn't seem like they have a bill of materials thing, thingamabob. Uh, I just copy pasted something, so maybe, yeah, there. Good job. 
Make that into Jackson. Multi platform. So I don't need this. I don't think. And then basically what we want to do is configure our client to have the JSON feature installed, apparently. Okay, now all I need is a Gator version. Uh, which I don't know. Bang. Uh, here. One, oof, zero usages. Let's use this one. One, five, one. Um, one, five, one, and then for, or, or do I need this one to get our client CIO? Then I want Jason. They should also have the same one. Yeah, okay. One five one, okay. Uh. <laughs> Wait, where did I add it? this? In the I am the web module, that's fine. Mm. What do you do with the bits actually? Can I pass them along? I feel like such a noob. And I'm a Twitch streamer. Eh? Oh, that's that's cool. Let me uh, rename this then. Thank you, Kotlin. Or IntelliJ. Uh, this seems to do something, so maybe let's go to registration steps, or maybe like uh, it's going to be in a client thing. No, um, client. This one, don't know what that is, should be fine. We've got a client, nice. And then what we do, client, post. And then, yeah, I don't know about that. Configure a serializer. Ah, I still need to do this though. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is going to be a bit important, I think. So we want that and then just, uh, no, that's not the thing I want. Huh? I want to, oh Lord, what's that thing called again? I want to install the Java date time ah, here. Ne? Ne. Register. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, date, time, I don't think, uh, maybe I don't have it here. Oh, I do. Oh, 
Or do you do it with claws? I don't, don't remember. I don't know what this thing is about. Oh yeah, so that's managed by this thing. Okie dokie, that seems legit. Then uh, let's register a player by using a post. Um, well, we know that something's going to come out of it. What's the problem here? Ah, yeah. Of course. Um, now the question is going to be, do I want the asynchronous nature to be propagated to my scenario or do I want it to remain within the steps? I don't really know yet. If I'm going to verify within my steps, then um, it should be blocked here. Huh? Uh, what what the hell is this thing? Okay, so I've got the builder here. Uh, what can I do? I can point to a URL. Hmm. So, <laughs> uh, my URL is going to be uh, localhost 8080. And then, if I want to post to... Uh, It's going to be API and then I think, let's check the register controller, the player controller, the registered player control, the controller, registration controller, uh, slash register, um, and I want to register something. Yes, sir. Spec and A, God. You might need the Java time module. Ah. Ooh. Thank you so much. My man. I guess I want that as well. So maybe let's do multiple modules then. And then also do the date time. Well, they did say might though, so it adds Java time. This one. Thank you. I don't think I need optional. Eh? Oh, but I do need the I do need the Kotlin module. I'm such a dumbass. I'm not even sure that I have it. I do, yeah. Lol. Ah, yeah. That I'm. I'm not. Um, I don't. I don't know if I like that. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. We do a body equals. Uh, do we reuse? Oh shit! Do we reuse the this one player name Jason? I guess we could, huh? See, this is the fun part. Let's register. Ah, no, it's not a scallop. It should be player nickname. Ha. Huh. Um, noise. I guess that's it. Or do I really want to do this? So, so, so boring. Uh, no. Let's do the one with media type maybe. Application chase in this one. There we go. Uh, yeah, sweet. And then I think what I might be able to do is like hmm, pre-install it a little bit so that this is going to be my client or something like that. Can't you do that? Maybe like add content type here. Oh, 
we'll just say that application JSON is all the time. So then I don't need to bother with that anymore. How, uh, how have you been, by the way, Spec and A? It's been a while. Still COVID free, I hope, you and your family. Uh, the body. Yeah, so th I think this is it, in fact. Huh? So the moment that this is done, we should have a call to uh, Ale Ale. Scenario import. The verify doesn't exist yet. What's this problem? Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, now I need to do run blocking stuff. Huh? This I don't think I need to do in a blocking context because it's going to be just a database call. You yeah, are, uh, if I'm doing well. I think so. Um, yeah, if you missed it earlier in the stream, I started off by saying that uh, doing or buying a house and renovating it is a uh, is very stressful. <laughs> Suddenly you need to know everything about building houses and stuff like that because nobody is asking you the right questions like we are doing as developers when we need to build a system for uh, our clients. So yeah, <laughs> take that in uh, mind or keep that in mind whenever you buy a house or start renovating. Pro tip, already start learning about building houses, I guess. <laughs> It's crazy how uh, how much you need to know. Uh, yeah, so now I think what I can do is use JDBI. Oh. Um, but really though, um, how am I going to do that? So oh, there's like another thing, this 8080 port here, it's going to to be set up by the Spring Boot test here, I think. Uh, port. Or maybe it's a web environment thing that I can use to configure it. Mm, yeah. Defined port. But then I don't know how to uh, set it. Mm, I think what you can do is do like a property or something like that. This I don't really remember. Need to make the requirements clear, yeah. Indeed. Then all of the the responsibilities up to me. It's so annoying. Uh property mapping. Is this the thing I want? Oh, Spring Boot test. I hate that I don't have this kind of information readily available in my head. Um, chat. You know what? The other thing I could do is instead of doing it like that, I could just say for tests, let's add a directory resources, and then and what? Reso, yeah. Directory resources, this one. Add a file called application.properties. I think this is what I'm using, I'm not sure. Yeah, so then this file will contain all of the properties I need for my, uh, let's call it 9999 or something. And then I can also fix my uh, registration steps 
thing to use the fixed port of 9999. There we go. Should be fine, huh? Uh. Spec and A. Tell everyone uh, at my previous project I say hi. Yeah. If you uh, if you see them online. And you should tell Kevin that I am um, um, moving even closer to where he lives right now. So that he should take care. Or else. Yeah, or else. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I think is this going to work, in fact. Huh? Quite confident. We do the server port. It should be fine. Um, I did not configure a database, so I'm kind of hoping that this is going to work. Ah, it's not going to work. Uh, where did I add stuff for that? Oh, nowhere. I didn't put it anywhere. I don't have a damn database, that's right. I'm not even persisting. Uh... <laughs> There's no way to verify. Um, that's so funny. Damn it. Okay, I am not persisting players at all yet. These are all just projections. Uh, so my application is far from done. But so maybe what what we can already test though eh, is uh, if I do registration controller. And, um, yeah, this, this thing isn't even using, God damn it. So what I really wanted to know is whether or not my command executors were working. Okay. You know what? Maybe I can just fire a, uh, huh? Ah, oh, yeah, this one, uh. Doesn't have a uh, query or command executor set. Uh, let's do register player. Doesn't exist yet. Nice. Then we'll just do player name, username. And uh, let's go to challenge player. Where is it? Over here. It's in challenging. So maybe let's make a package called registration uh, uh, register we register player as a file <laughs> this is a data class which is a command that should return a I don't remember Ah, it's not typed even. Okay, nice. Um, and it should have a value of the nickname, which is a string, I guess. That's good enough. No? Ah, it doesn't have an ID. Ooh. Well, actually, my ID is non-existent here. Yeah, I guess we can use it. Let's just do a new one. Huh? No? Uh, I get get ID. Random. There we go. Then whenever we ask uh, a register player ID, we can just use a new one. And there we go. Fine. Um. Then. Let's move to, so that's core API. This is a command. We've got a register player command. Mm, oh yeah, I guess it should return player registered. I don't even have that thing. Uh, 
last player registered D. and then this will have I guess an ID which is an aggregate ID sure and then we'll also have a, a nickname nickname string this is a domain event okay I I broken no oh, this is great and then what I'm using the wrong indentation voila Okay, and then what? Now I need a, a handler for this thing. And those handlers we put in, not an API, but in the implementation, uh, I guess here. Mm. Yeah, so maybe a registered player isn't just registered yet. So maybe what I can do is create one somehow. Mm. Let's put it here. Uh, register player handler. Uh, let's give it that thing already. It should be a command handler for the register player command. No, not registered, but register. Then let's implement stuff. Normally I would be unit testing all of this, of course. Uh, but seeing as I just want to completely test the, the com total flow and I don't have anything <laughs> for to, to, to do it yet. So uh, a register player, let's do. We will create a new one. On the ID, which is going to be new. Aleo. And then the player nickname, which might just be fine. Oi. Uh, I want to create a registered player, that's right. Uh, that's good enough for me. And then basically I want to save this. Uh, persist, save. Don't have it yet. Uh, voila! That thing doesn't exist yet. And then I need to throw return uh, player registered with oof. with what with the aggregate ID so that's the registered players ID and then the registered players nickname I think is what this thing needs yeah okay save is something I need to create here we've got an ah oh, nice good enough for me uh, this thing, hmm, should, do I want to return an aggregate or not? No, I guess it's fine. Uh, that I don't want to deal with just yet. Mm, here's the handler again. I think this should be okay already. So the implementation here is nothing. Uh, this can go, nice. Um, uh, that's because I don't have, uh, a player repository in fact. So maybe I should put that somewhere, uh, or do I, maybe it's already in here somewhere. 
No. No, I would have replaced it. Okay, so... This is a... This is a repository for a registered player implemented. That's fine. And then uh, pff, yeah, just return. I don't know. Null. Then we don't get anything returned here. And here we do. Re we don't do anything. Uh, cool. Come make it a component. That's impossible because we're in our uh, core. So that I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Yeah, for that I still need to figure some stuff out. But if I can't actually wire this. Ah, no, actually it's going to work because uh, repository is a component. And because of that, uh, it might just work. This thing will be registered as a component. Crossing fingers. Okay, so, um, yeah. Noise, noise, noise. That's the handle. This thing is going to return that and then our command executor was going to put that on a broadcaster, which I don't have yet, but that's okay. Maybe it can just be a, uh, like a stupid list or something for now. Isn't that good enough? Let's add a domain broadcaster as a class. Mm. Make it a component as well, so that it can get injected up top. Then that needs a publish. Ali, this doesn't exist yet, so. Oh my. Yep. Um, yeah, add it to the list of domain events, I guess. Ooh, actually. No, I was thinking maybe I can use my um, my event stream here, but I, do, I don't I don't want to do that yet uh, because I want to make the distinction between my uh, domain event pipeline, let's say. So this is being broadcast, huh? By the broadcaster, and then this thing is going to pick it up. Hmm, maybe it should be fine if I just put it on the event stream here already. I'm not sure. Hmm. Anyway, uh, a list is okay. Mm. Let's just make it a mutable list even of uh, domain events. Events. Let's make it a new mute. No, wait, a mutable list. There we go. And then we'll just add. I think that works like this. Nice. Oi. Uh, it's like this, probably, yeah. Yay! There we go. Um, and yeah, I think that's quite okay. Maybe I should also log it or something, you know? Oh no, do I have that thing? 
and some are in utility and infrastructure that would be cool did you think about this past them no you didn't dang it oh, i don't want to mess with the logging Lesai. Uh, logger. Um, yeah, it's basically this thing, huh? Logger Brev Logger Factory. Oops. Nee. There we go. Um, and then I can use that logger to log. Hopefully, in full. Uh. Domain event happened. I don't know, man. Do we have... It's an abstract class. Hmm. Maybe I need to put some... Why isn't it a data class, though? Is that because you cannot... I wonder... No, makes sense. Huh? It's too concrete, but I do want to put some stuff on there, like a two string, uh, and then also like an equals implementation. Huh? I guess it will be enough if I mm, do an equals on the ID, but I don't want to do it right now. Uh, let's do. The class name or something. That should be good enough. Uh. Happened. I mean, was broadcast. There we go. Good enough. Then hopefully uh, we can just distill from the uh, logger info that that event did happen because it got fired after a successful command execution. Holy hell. This is already quite the infrastructure that we've set up. Eh? <laughs> damn. I say goddamn. Uh, the repository. How oh, do we want to do that? I don't want to. I just don't want to. Yeah. Okie dokie, uh, that's that's all I need to do. Huh? Just execute the command and be done with it. Noise. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, write our scenario test <laughs> or test our scenario test, let's say. Uh, where is it? Where is 
the scenario test, the, the I registration scenario. We want to set up our or start our application. I think I'm not sure. It should just find the application, hopefully. And by application, I mean this one. Uh, and then when I run this test, it should register the player. By doing that and then verification I uh, I don't have anything for that yet because I don't persist anything yet oh you know what I could oh I could auto wire the broadcaster I guess late in it the broad domain broadcaster this one Uh, dang it. I think like that. And then we should do this. And then this should have a broadcaster as a receiver. I uh, know the domain event broadcaster. This is quite annoying. And then I can do yeah. Ah, it's not open. Oh, damn it. Uh, this is private, uh, so that makes sense. Um, let's do find event or something. I don't know. Fun. Find event. Where we... Mm. Yeah, this is probably in the wrong order or something. I keep on forgetting how this stuff works. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Ah! Uh. There was the um I oh yeah, have first and now this cannot be yeah okay and then this doesn't work because yeah only private or final members can be inlined. But then if I do that, I can't reach the events. I don't want to make it public. How the hell did I do that again in the event store? Oh yeah, this thing is um, a flow of events. So basically it's... <laughs> querying stuff dang it I can't use the same pattern there so uh, 
Či to. Then I guess I'll have to work with Okay, this is okay. And here I need to add the class, so uh and then Voila. And then if I go back to the, my steps, I can do find event for uh, the red player registered class class. Voila. Oh, uh, no, this is fine. I think what comes out of this thing? Is this a play registered? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, Hopefully I can use a search a yo mm, nickname is equal to player nickname. Voila player registered event. Now I'm not really sure, but uh, first throws no such element. I guess what I could do here is or null and make this return an optional and then uh, go like this and then it should be okay. Okay. And then uh, my scenario is compiling it. Let's just run it and see what happens. I think it'll fail. Not sure. Since I don't have a database though, it might just work. Ah no, the event sourcing thing requires a database. Maybe this even does too. Huh. I think it might fail. Oh damn, I'm not really sure. This doesn't get doesn't look like it gets auto wired. No, that's fine. In the event sourcing thing, do we have Some smart stuff. Uh, here we've got the Postgres event store, which is a component that does get wired, um, which even has a migration here. So I guess it needs a database client, but I don't know where I configure this thing. Hmm. That's right. I run. Hmm. I guess I could just copy this one. I know. Not sure. Is it being run or not? Uh, apparently not. Uh, the scenario run. 
I can't run it. Why is that? Like this? Ah. Ah, it's an array, array thing. Nay. Is this not the uh, extension? Ah, nay. Ah, okay. That <laughs> might explain a lot. There we go. I'm still confused as to why I can't just run it. What the hell? Do I need to call it test? Nope. Music stopped. There we go. Oh, Leo, why? Uh This even does the extend with for me already, so... Holly, what stupid stuff am I missing again? Ah, uh... This. Yeah. It's getting late. Ten past eleven. Yeah, <laughs> at least someone's awake. I knew it was something stupid as well. So, yeah, uh, I really hope this uh, just works now. But uh, I doubt it because I'm afraid that it was. It's going to try uh, to register. That uh, event sourcing thing, and then that's not going to work. But yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Fail to load application context as I expected, but why? Can't find the R2DBC database client. And why is that? There's no suitable R2DBC connection URL. That's exactly what I suspected. Okay. Um, I think we can cheat a bit, huh? If it's just a URL that it needs... Well... Uh... Maybe I can do this, huh? And this one will create a Postgres DB on the fly. But then I'm not really sure. How how do I make sure that this my my main test loads this thing in my uh, Spring application uh, even? Uh? Okay. What? It's not used anywhere. Ah, yeah. Ah, no. Now the other thing is, I kind of want to test in the end that uh, I have uh, data there, but yeah, maybe what you're suggesting is 
good enough for now. Eh? Uh, I'm afraid if I just do this that it's going to exclude my actual uh, scramble egg application. So let's add that one for sure. It's needing K classes and then this. Ah, yeah, um, it can't reach this one because it's in a test. Um, I just want to copy paste it real quick. The test config is not a, a test. Um, but yeah, it's in a different module and then um, test dependencies are not transitively got on a, uh, I'm just gonna copy all of this shears. Oh boy. Oh no. Ah, this should, it should find because that's a uh, public, eh? I think. <laughs> I just say that, but I'm not. Mm, yeah, it should be on the class path because event sourcing. Ah, uh, maybe that's because event sourcing adapter isn't. Maybe I can just. I don't. I'm not even using the event sourcing module, so. Maybe I can just get rid of this dependency, then it won't include it on its class path. And since I'm not even using it. Then uh, that will be the easiest fix, I think. And now this is my assumption that I'm indeed not using it. <laughs> but I'm uh, not not really sure. I don't think I am actually. No, I don't think I am. Let's let's find out where I am also doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Why does it have this dependency? What? Ah, oh, yeah, because of my projections. That's incorrect. Okay, I don't want my RDBMS then either. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. But it's going to be the quickest solution, and uh, I don't need this stuff then. Bye. Uh, let's get this one out of there too. Okay. And then recompile. <sighs> We're so close. We're so close to a working scenario test. Yeah, so uh, goodbye. Let's run it. Let's run it. <laughs> no, why? Why is it still doing this? This makes no sense. REST API. You son of a bee. Why? I don't remember why. Uh... It's 
Seems a bit weird. Fast scallop was being an idiot. Quite sure. I know myself too well. Alright. Now that I've, now that I've gotten rid of all of the oh my god. Okay. Let's rerun it. Very curious. Oh my god. Also I need sleep, so Uh, excuse you, outgoing content expected, guess I didn't. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Content has type player register player name Jason. Yeah, that's, that's this thing. But outgoing. Ah, it's not typed or something or what? If you expect serialized body, please check that you have installed a corresponding feature like Jason and set content. Do I really need to set it explicitly? Like this. Let's try that out. Because I, my hope was that uh, this would have fixed it for all of uh, my future things. Okay, back to uh, Kator content type. That's the thing I am trying to do, eh? Content type. But I am using the media type thing, so maybe it's a little bit different here. Mm. I do have media type. What was it? Yeah. Analyzing. Oh. Content type is a HTTP header. Yeah. Oh, hey. It's not compiling. Or what? Let's just run it. No. Uh, it's this one. Ah, okay. There it is. Compiling. Ah, yeah. That's why probably this thing, then I don't understand how this is even compiling. Maybe it's not doing anything. So really what I want is this thing, probably. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. There are two content type uh, things or something. Oh, list is empty. In the handler for a command. Oui, oui. Uh, that means that 
it's my my list of command handlers are not being injected properly i think why is that oh that sucks eh? shit eh? spring is not recognizing um that there are multiple beans um that should adhere to this command handler or that's my second guess is that this thing needs a component but then yeah that sucks because uh i don't have spring um annotations here ah uh, i can't handle spring this is why i prefer c sharp nice yeah, damn it. If, but if uh, add component doesn't work on spring, then I'm uh, on interfaces, then I'm quite screwed. Uh, as I didn't really want to introduce spring. You could make a bean for every handler in your spring module, but it's not really nice either. I, uh... No, but actually that's something I should do. Uh... Oh. So then, if I want to, um, how do you say that? I want to do my own annotation processing on my core beans so that they get registered in spring. So I've got like my, I will have like my own annotations in between. Uh, I, I hate that. I hate the sound of that. Jesus Christ. Can't I just add, I don't know, like spring core or something here? Just, just the, just the injection part. Uh. <sighs> I, I mean, I can't go around that. I also want dependency injection in my core domain. Eh? Just like this. Oh, by the way. It should be like that. Yeah. Exactly, spec and A. It's always a struggle in trying to keep your domain clear of frameworks, but then having to write frameworky code yourself. Uh, we are pragmatic though, so I'm going to look up where the component interface or the stair. Ah, oh, damn it! I already saw it context so i only want spring framework spring context uh, not here but the one from core uh, so build dot the cradle in core and my own framework doesn't have any documentation <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's painful huh? uh let's do implementation for auric spring oh no now i need actual oh no this is bad this is bad oh fuck because now i need a hard-coded version uh, because i can't just use my uh spring conventions thing here <laughs> oh, fuck. hang on i do have i have an implementation dependency on the infrastructure project and this one does have spring eh? how does that work again it should also get the transitive dependency of a uh, spring then no Am I being a dumbass? 
as usual, I would think, but maybe you also need beans or something then. Hmm. Component. Yeah, let's see if this does the job eh? and then uh Ay ay. Wow. IntelliJ is too smart, yeah. Holy fuck. Failed to load. Maybe, I guess I ran it too fast. Because <laughs> I corrected that. I need to put like... If this works, I need to put like a giant disclaimer... Class cast. What? Huh? That makes sense. Uh, Yeah, that's not good. Eh? Um, this is just going to give me the, the first command handler. Of course, it's not going to be the, the same one. I need to filter this instance with the uh, CMD. And then this I can't do because uh, I don't have, I'm or I'm losing the type information here. Uh, so what I need to do is do what the fuck? Handler for command. I need the command here. Uh, get the class. Mm. So here. Let's do it the other way around. Um, so I want a type or the command type. This I want to have a parameter for that thing. And it's not an NEM. It's a class of a uh, Yes, now that this thing doesn't matter anymore. But I guess it should just be this thing. I'm too stupid for the... What's it called? The, the, the reified types. Uh, maybe I still need it though to pass along to this thing then I want the first one that matches this type um, and then this should be an abstract property on the command that's great 
and now I'll need to what the fuck mm. where is the return type somehow it's disappeared uh, so I'm going to get a re command handler of a CMD in return normally Ah, uh, this is the issue. Huh? Ah, uh, yeah, but... I'm too tired to fix generic stuff, yeah. Jesus. It was already going to return a command handler, I idiot. Just like this, but then I don't understand why the, the handle doesn't work. Oh yeah. That's why it wasn't uh, ever on the... Okay, problem. Okay, um, I don't need this generic stuff. Can I inline? Now I need to implement this one uh, here. Oi. Ah, you really need a class. Why is that? Hmm. Ah, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's uh, still, it's the Java uh, filter resistance. Um, and then so on my register player command, um, yeah, uh. Oh, fucking hell. I want to say... Um, is it like this again? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I really don't uh, know too much about generic stuff in Kotlin. Uh, what's the suggestion? The type of primary constructor of class register player to... But then if I do that, then it's no longer an override, I guess. Uh. Okay. That I don't want to do. I guess it's this thing I still want to do. Ay, ay, ay.
Yes. I want to say uh, blah extends like you do in Java, but I don't know how to do that in uh, Kotlin. Uh. It's also not something I want to do. Now yeah, let's look it up. Huh? Uh, Kotlin generics. Uh, what's that thing called again? Yeah, I forget. Oi, oi, oi. I've missed a bunch. I'm handling it in the command. Didn't you want to handle it in the command handler? What am I handling in the command? So the handler for the command is just a, a function that is going to run over all of these command handlers here that are untyped for now. And this I think is just so that you can trick Spring into giving you all of the different kinds of command handlers. And then if I remember correctly, yeah. <clears throat> um, and what you then do is you say, I want all of the command handlers Uh, uh, yeah, I know what. Basically, what I want to check is can handle. Uh, whether a handler can handle a type. So, maybe it's not command handler. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the thing I wanted to do. So I wanted to check it can handle this command type here. It meant that your command has a handle, which returns a domain event method, but you also have a specific command handler for every command. Oof. My command has a handle. That's incorrect, yeah. Yeah, this is incorrect. You're right. Goodbye. Ah, and that's, ah, yeah, that's because this thing is not returning um, command handlers, but commands, in fact. That's probably why. But why is that? Yeah, it's returning CMDs. I don't want that. Uh. I want it to return a handler. And to do that, I want to filter. Wait, so then these are, yeah, no, those are command handlers and that. And this doesn't exist. It should return a boolean. But then it's still weird that uh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, the, I don't think it's the cast. It's the filter is instance that uh, was the the issue because it it changes the type based on the generic that you pass along to it. Uh, so that was my mistake. Um. Okay, so that's a bit easier then than 
my register player thing no longer needs this thing I guess that's going to move to and because I have the type uh, it's, it's just this thing so get rid of that still want to do this uh, this is just a command and then command class ah hmm out cmd yeah and this is like this that i i don't uh, i know i don't really know how that properly works but so now i need to implement a uh yeah and this should be bound to a oh boy. If return uh, command type, this makes no sense. <laughs> if it is a register player class. But I already am saying that it's it needs to be this class, so <laughs> it makes no sense. I need to go to bed, but also <laughs> I want to I want to fix this. This is challenge player, eh? This makes absolutely no sense. It I should be able to just check to which command that it's bound, and then check that this is the the correct one. But I don't know how to do that. I just don't. Okay. We've changed stuff. Maybe it will work. Luckily, I don't have enough. Uh, I don't have a lot of command handlers yet. Oh, what? What? Did I run the correct test? Because yes, eh? well, GG, this is uh, great success. Eh? <laughs> well, let's see. So, we've got, I'm actually quite proud of this. This is nice. Uh, Let's run through it. Eh? So we've got a registration scenario. This is a test that we can run. Um, we auto wire a domain event broadcaster so that we can verify that there's a registered player in there. This I need to fix. Uh, this needs to be done a bit differently. Like maybe inject a list or something to the event broadcaster. I don't know. Anyway, before we can verify, what we'll do is we'll do a register player step, which is just a stupid function call. 
which uses a static client that's being set up with a uh, Jackson in the back end or in the background, which registers a Kotlin module and a Java time module. Thank you for that spec and A. Then uh, we'll do a post to uh, this URL. And uh, this is a fixed port. This fixed port is coming from the application.properties, uh, which our scenario test reads out because of this thing. Then uh, we'll use content type uh, application JSON so that the web client understand it needs to seri what's that like? Yeah, serialize this player name JSON um, body. Um, then what will happen is we'll actually do an actual HTTP call to this URL. Um, our registration controller, I forgot what it's called, this thing is being hit because uh, Spring does a setup properly. A command executor is being injected there. Uh, we receive the player name in the JSON. We execute a register player command via the command executor. This thing, which is the thing that we just fixed, looks for a handler to handle this command that it uh, uh, receives, then actually handles it. Um, the handle always returns a domain event and then eventually publishes it via the domain broadcaster. Uh, all of this stuff gets injected. This handle here, uh, that's the implementation of our register player handler because we are firing a register player command. And in here, what we're doing is we are creating a new registered player using the ID that's coming from the command and the nickname that's coming from the command. We are then saving the registered player, which is, is not implemented just yet, uh, but eventually should go to a database or something. Then uh, we are returning the domain event saying that, hey, uh, successful save, that means successful player registered event. And then, uh, this get published, then since that event got published, we're also returning a response entity OK for the player name that was uh, being posted. And then we're back to our step. This finishes successfully, so the register player step is done. And then we will verify that uh, our nickname here is now a registered player. And the way that we're doing that is by passing a broadcaster that we auto wire here because I didn't want my steps to have that information. Um, and then I can just check if uh, the broadcaster contains an event or player registered with this nickname. And we've got a green test, so that's working. And then this, I will do an optimize import. And then there needs to be like a huge disclaimer. Where was it again? Oh yeah, in the build gradle of the core. Of core, 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 core. Okay. Uh, to do, separate. Uh, scrambled eggs, spring conventions in, yeah, into, uh, spring DI and others. Okay. Nice. So we don't need to hard code a version and use the bomb instead. The bomb. <laughs> Let's make a commit. Uh, what's this? This is a whip, but it's also a huge feature. I mean, a huge achievement unlocked. So let's do this. Uh, working 
scenario test. I guess it's temporarily because we don't have a database yet until we add a database. Whoa. Thank you, spec and a for the helpful bearing. All right. You will be forever listed in this, uh, in this project. <laughs> no, but seriously, if I don't think if you, if you didn't say that, uh, I meant to handle in my command handler and not in my command, then I would have stuck, uh, for a longer time. Shit, now we've got errors. Fuck. How is that possible? It's still working though. I think, I bet these are here. Let's commit anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'll commit the, the, the to do I edit myself, you idiot. Push it. Holy, f look at this glorious commit. Okay, man, I'm, I'm, I need to stop. <laughs> Ale. Thank you for hanging out, Spec and A. Say hi to everyone I know. And um, see you next time. Have a good one. Eh? Ah, I'm going to. No, I'm not going to find somebody to host because that will be a bit sad. Here's a host with uh, the full one viewer. Good night, mate. See ya. Bye, everybody.